and welcome to this Learn, Make, Create episode with Annie's Creative Studio. I'm Heather Valentine and today we are working with batiks to create an amazing bag. One look at this pattern and you will fall in love with the pockets. From running errands to a night out on the town, this bag has a place for everything. During class today, I will chat with you about the unique properties of batiks, show you how to prepare your fabric, create boxed corners, and install a magnetic closure. Before we begin, let's take a look at our supplies. I've gone ahead and actually laid them out on my workspace. And one of the first things that you're going to need to do is to download the pattern. Then you'll need an assortment of batiks. These are a beautiful array of blues and purples from Island Batik. Some fusible fleece, some fusible inner lining, your magnetic closure, and then your basic supplies, including your rotary cutter and mat, scissors, we're going to be using some binder clips, your quilting ruler, and some pins. I've chosen a coordinating thread that matches well and blends with my batiks. So go ahead, gather your supplies, and then come back for us to chat about batiks. You may have noticed from the pattern description that this calls for batiks. Now, if you're not familiar with batiks, they are a special kind of fabric that have unique characteristics, and I thought it would be good, a good idea to share a few fun facts. One is that this fabric is actually handmade. It's created by dipping the fabric into the dye over and over again to get that layered effect. That's why you'll notice that you will find variations between the yardage. So one yard may be a little bit more on the purpler side, on um, let's say this piece right here, while other areas may have a brighter blue. And this characteristic just adds to the beauty of this fabric. Another interesting component is that there are no printed selvage edge like what you would find in your standard quilting cotton. That's right, you will not see all of the different dyes printed out along the edge of your selvage. That allows you to use the full width of this fabric when you're cutting. And another fun fact is that sometimes when you're pressing, you may smell a faint scent of wax. It's just part of the process and kind of adds to the charm of this fabric. Now, there are two things that I want to kind of bring to your attention with this fabrication, especially if you're new to it. I really suggest that you pre-wash your fabric. Otherwise, it may bleed when you actually put it in the wash later on, and you certainly don't want any of the dyes to blend over onto something else within your project or onto another uh, item in your wash. Or another reason is that from pre-washing, it'll prevent any crocking. Now, if you're not familiar with the term crocking, basically what that means is that if you rub up against it, the dye may come off. Now, you may be more familiar with that with some of your darker wash jeans kind of rubbing off on either your hands or maybe um, a car seat or something of that nature. But either way, I highly suggest that you take the time to just give it a quick spin in your wash cycle and then press it. So why don't you go ahead ahead, um, take care of that real quick, and then come on back and we will begin to cut and prep our fabric to create this amazing bag. So the first thing that I've done before I've actually pulled out any of these pieces is I have gone through and labeled all of my pieces. I It will make it so much easier for you when you're actually putting them all together and you won't have to hunt around and look for them. Then what we're going to do is take our fabric. This happens to be the front of my bag. And the first thing that we will do is on the wrong side, we will be putting down our fusible. I've already gone ahead and fused these two pieces just for the sake of time. But what you wanna make sure is that when you pull them over, that this is not coming apart. If you see this right here where these are kind of pulling apart, that means that your adhesive is not fully melted onto your fabric and you're going to want to press it a little bit more and activate that glue. Now for our front pieces, after we put on our fusible, 
we want to put a layer of the fusible fleece on here. Now, the fusible fleece is really soft and fluffy on one side and then has glue and is almost like a little pebbly like on the other. So we want to make sure that we're putting the pebble side down because that's all the glue and the soft side up. So we are going to put that right on top of our actual interlining and this is going to take a few minutes for the heat to get through everything. Now you can also use a pressing cloth here if you like that'll prevent any of the glue from coming up and being on your iron. Now you can see I'm really taking my time and I'm letting it just kind of sit to activate that glue. You're going to want to repeat this for all of your pattern pieces just like what it says in the instructions. So you'll have three layers. You're going to have your, lay this still needs a little bit more you can see, but you're going to have your fabric, your inner lining, and then your fusible. So I'm going to iron it right down on top. Now the fusible fleece tends to stretch a little bit when you're using it, so make sure that you are keeping it to the correct size. And just keep in mind that we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. So we are going to repeat this sandwich to all of our pieces per the instructions. So go ahead and um, get all of those fused together and then meet me back at the sewing machine and we're going to start in our pockets. Now that we have all of our prep work done, it is time to start piecing those pockets. I've gone ahead and I've laid out my fabric strips just the way I would like to sew them on my machine and I'm setting up my machine with a standard straight stitch. So we're just going to join two pieces together and strip them row by row. You'll be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance as per the pattern and you're just going to sew it straight through. So you're going to continue to sew your strips together and then you'll be pressing all the seam allowance over to one side. So now that I have all the strips sewn, I'm going to press them. After you've pressed it, you're going to want to go ahead and put in your fusible and your stabilizer. Just like we fused them to the rest of our pieces, we're going to do the same here. We'll just be creating a sandwich. So go ahead, do that for this section and then repeat it again because we have two pockets. And then after that, we'll be ready to join it to the next step of our bag. Once you fuse your interfacing and fusible fleece to the inside of your pocket rectangle, it's time to sew 1 8 of an inch seam on the folded edge. Repeat for the back pocket. Position them in place as indicated in the sketch figure 4 and stitch top to bottom to form the pocket divisions on figure 5. You may also want to add a little bit of a bar tack at the top for extra reinforcement. Creating your side pockets is a breeze. It is just like making your front and back pockets. You'll be using your B1 strips, interfacing, and fleece. After you assemble them all together, you will base them in place on your side strip. Now that we have all of our pockets complete, it's time to start really digging in and assembling the bag. You can see that I've gone ahead and I've stitched my side units to the front and back of my bag following the pattern, and now it's time to add the bottom. The bottom can be a little tricky. I mean, you have a three-dimensional object and you want to make sure that you attach everything properly. So what we're going to do is remember our one quarter of an inch seam allowance and stitch from point A to point B. And I would suggest that you use those, binder cl those binding clips because it'll give you a little more of a bite and a little more control over a pin. And you're just going to align everything up and stop, start and stop your stitching one quarter of an inch from the edge. Okay, now that I have everything all lined up, I am ready to go. So this is gonna look a little tricky on camera, but as soon as you sit down in front of your machine, you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. So using our one quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're going to stitch straight along the edge. Now 
and just remove your clips as you go. You'll have to make sure that you push the side out of the way so that it's not interfering. So after you have it joined, you can see that you have your bottom flap and now it's just a matter of joining it to the other side. So we're going to repeat the process and then get ready to make that, that boxed corner. Now that we have the bottom stitched to both sides, front and back, you can see right here, hopefully get a good shot of that. We're actually going to attach just that section. So you're going to fold everything kind of out of the way. It's gonna take a little bit of maneuvering because those pockets are really thick. And then we are just going to stitch from one corner to the other, making sure that we capture all of that seam allowance. And this is really where the magic of our bag kind of comes into place. It's gonna create the shape instantly. Now, I like to give it a little back stitch here, just for security. And you're gonna to wanna to repeat that on the other side. Now let's take a look at our handiwork. Now that we have it in here, you can actually see that it's standing up nice and straight, but let's turn it right side out so that you can actually see what it looks like. Now it's time to do a little bit of prep work on our flap. You can see that I already have both pieces, both of my fused pieces here, and I'm putting them together, but we need to mark the shape along the bottom. So we are going to go two inches from the edge and just mark. And then we're gonna do the same on the other side. So six, one, two. And then we're just gonna connect them. And this is gonna give us our shape for our flap. We wanna repeat it to the other side. And then using your ruler and rotary cutter, trim it away. Now this is your shape for your flap that's gonna go on the outside and cover your bag. We wanna to head to the machine and stitch all the way around, leaving this top open. Now that we have our stitch all the way around, I think it's important for you to go ahead and actually trim up your corners. So go ahead and trim your four corners, giving it a little bit of room for all that fabric to kind of work its way in and then turn your flap right side out and give it a good press. So now that we've got our flap turned right side out, looking nice and smooth with our corners, it's time to actually add our closure. And the closure is magnetic, okay? Now for anyone who hasn't worked on these before, they can be a little tricky in terms of breaking them apart. So you wanna make sure you just, if they come together, that you just kind of put your nail through it and it'll be fine. But the trick to these is actually measuring our placement. All right, so I wanna make sure that you can see it on camera. So I've actually pulled out a piece of my tailor's chalk and I've measured over just so that you know, and it, to my center. So on my flap, it's an inch and a half. And then I want it to be one inch up. So I'm just going to put a quick little mark right there for you to, see where it is and then the way to line things up is actually to use the little guide that they give you inside with your snaps and we are going to put little holes right there so let's mark each one of those so that i know exactly where it is okay now i have three marks so i am going to use my Seam ripper very carefully. You want to make your hole a little bit smaller rather than larger. Remember, once you make it, you can't go back. And just give yourself a little opening in order to put this through. Okay. And I am going to put on my flap, I'm going to put the male portion. So we are going to slide that right through. On both sides, I'm gonna have my words 
going in the right direction. Okay. So we're going to slide it through and just to give you an idea of what the back looks like and then we are going to just push this over and then put your tabs out and that will secure it in place. So you're going to want to repeat this for your placement on the other side of your bag when we get to that step. But this is how to install a magnetic snap in a flash. It's really easy. It's time to start working on those final details like our strap. So I've already gone ahead and pre-pressed my piece, but just as a quick reminder, we are folding it in half, giving it a press, and then we are folding it in half again, each to the center, and that'll give us that nice crisp edge. And then I'm just going to stitch along both sides, giving it a top stitch and keeping everything in place. Okay, now that I've top stitched my strap, I can actually align it onto my bag, position it in place, and give it a quick stitch to stabilize it. So why don't you go ahead and do that to yours while I do mine, and we will meet back here. We are in the home stretch, guys. We've put so much effort and love into this project, and now it's time to put our lining in. We're gonna clean finish the inside and make everything look nice and pretty. So I've already gone ahead and I have stitched together my lining, and actually what I did was I got a little tricky, and I put a divider into one of my inner pockets. So, might be something for you to think about if you wanna add it into your bag. Not only did I add in my little divider to the pocket, but I want to remind you that you need to leave an opening for turning later on. So I left about an eight inch opening along the bottom seam of my lining. So we are going to leave it in the wrong side out position. And we are basically going to put all of this bag inside there. Now think about where you want your pockets, if you put a, a divider in it, where you would want it to be. I actually am going to put my divider in the back, so I wanna make sure that I put my bag in properly. And you are gonna just slip one inside the other, and it may be a little tricky, you're gonna to have to, you know, kind of finesse it, but a great trick is for you to actually use the opening and pull your strap out so that it doesn't get caught on anything, right? Because we would hate to catch that somewhere along the way and have to get out the seam ripper. So I like to keep it nice and tight, put everything in side. And then you're gonna just pull everything up to the top I am gonna use my trusty quilt binding clips and I'm gonna put everything in place right along the top of it and then I'm going to give it a quick spin around the machine. But before you actually take it to the machine, it's kind of important that you take like just a few extra minutes here and line up all of your seams. So you wanna make sure that your corners are all lined up and I suggest putting an extra clip there so that everything kind of stays in position and repeat it for all four sides. All right, you can see that my bag is looking like everything is nice and in place. I've got my strap pulled out. I've spent extra time to make sure that my corners are in place. My flap is sandwiched nicely, nice and flat in between here, and I don't have to worry about it getting caught. And now all that's left to do is for me to run a quick stitch all the way around on my sewing machine. All right guys, well that wraps up our class for today. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about batiks and how to install a magnetic closure. I'm sure all those extra pockets are gonna come in handy and you'll never lose your keys again. Be sure to load up a couple of photos of your progress so that we can all see in the Annie's Creative Studios photo gallery and check out what other makers just like you are working on. Until next time, happy stitching.